So we got a new series here. In the previous series, we went from body and head into ZBrush and back and kind of go Z back and forth to create a goblin character from a neutral base and character creator. In this one, and that, that had a little bit of facial animation in it. It had default facial shapes. In this one, it's uh, face tools, and we're going to focus very much on the face and expression wrinkles. Uh, so before we do that, I'm going to go into what wrinkle expressions are, how you can apply them in character creator, how they work. And then we're going to hop into face tools and have a lot of fun in there. So stick around. This video is just going to be on installation and setting up your expression wrinkles and how they operate, basically. So the first thing we need to do is launch our Real Illusion Hub. And you're going to see there's iClone, Character Creator, Cartoon Animator. To make sure you have the latest version of Character Creator, hit this button in the upper right, that little refresh button. Install the latest version of Character Creator. And then make sure you have Character Creator selected. And you'll see add-ons are going to change. So for the Character Creator add-ons, go in here and install the ZBrush Face Tools add-on. Uh, once you're done with that, go ahead and open Character Creator. And now that we got Character Creator open, just like when we started in the Goblin series, go over here to the right under the Modify panel and choose Load Neutral Base. And because we're going to be focusing on the face of the character, you can either zoom in on the face or up here in the top of your menu bar, there's a camera option. If you click the drop down menu, you see you can hit J to zoom in on the face here. So now we have a neutral face and there's, this is one of three components that we're going to be juggling when we're talking about face tools. One is our base face. What is your character? And in our goblin series, that's basically when we turn this neutral face into our goblin character, the exact same thing with face tools. You're going to have a base head that you can change in any way you want. And that base head will still have another component, which is called face shapes. That's the movement of the face. Like when I'm open my mouth, that's a jaw open and this is my face doing it. Now, if I change my face into a, a gorilla or a reptile creature, there's still going to be a jaw open. So just to kind of show you that, I'm going to hop in here to this morph tab. So we have our neutral head here. And if I scroll, uh, you know, we'll just go in here to uh, full head and I'm going to morph this into a completely different character here. This is a completely different base head. However, it still has shapes. So let's go in here to the motion tab, go in here to edit facial. And if I grab, click on the chin here and just drag that around, you're going to see I have jaw open shapes. I have, if I double click to get rid of that selection, I can go and make a new selection. I can take these, these sliders here and move the brow up. So you're going to see, even though I changed our base head to another base head, which is very much what we're going to be doing, I still have shapes applied to this base head. All shapes are, if I go in here to our scene tab and then open up our CC3 base plus character, there's a base body in here. Change the shading mode from normal to wireframe. You're going to see when I do jaw open or when I do brow up, it's only moving around super low res geometry. Those are your face shapes. So we have a base head that can be whatever character you want, any type of character, however you want to modify it. And then on top of that, this base head is going to drive our base shapes. And those base shapes are basically eyebrow up, jaw open, eye squint, anything that's moving around this low res geometry. However, if I hop out of that mode, so let's go ahead and change it from wireframe back to normal. And I'm going to go reopen our edit facial here. You're going to see when these brows go up, nothing really happens in this area of the head. Now, if I, if I lean in a little bit here and here's my neutral forehead and then my brows go up, what happens? I have a ton of wrinkles in here. Number one, because I'm old. Number two, because when a human raises its brow, it compresses skin and then it creates these wrinkles. We don't have, you saw the geometry. We don't have enough geometry here to support a whole bunch of old man wrinkles like I got here. That can be driven by a, a, an expression wrinkle, which is basically a normal and a diffuse and a couple other maps that we'll talk about. But essentially, Character Creator has a system that, main, that states when, my, when the character's brow goes up, blend in and it could be left brow right brow doesn't matter it's going to blend in that appropriate amount of wrinkles in that area based on what shape is happening what low res shape is being pushed it'll blend in a texture map that'll give you wrinkles we don't have those applied to our character so let's go ahead and say uh, reset to zero for our edit facial here and we'll go ahead and close out of that let's go back to our morph and i'm just going to double click this caleb head to send it back to zero so we're just back to our base neutral head here 
and let's activate expression wrinkles for our character. You'll notice, or maybe you won't because you don't know that this exists yet, over here in our modify panel, we don't have an expression wrinkles tab. In order to get access to that, we have to go to the top group of our character and you're gonna see that will give us an expression wrinkles tab. So if we click on this, there is an activate expression wrinkles button. What that's gonna do, if I go in here to my content tab, make sure we're in template, go in here to our actor section and at the very bottom, there's a place called expression wrinkles. Inside of this root directory, uh, we have some, you know, we got Camilla's, Kevin, Susan's and neutral. If I click this button on, essentially what that's doing is the same thing as going into this content template and then double clicking neutral and that'll apply it to our character because again our character is selected that top group node or I can drag this onto my character and it'll apply it or like I said you can go over here check this button on and that's going to apply this neutral expression pack to our character. So now that we've done that go ahead and turn on check with expressions this little check mark right here and now when I click on this head, two things are gonna happen. Number one, this expressions area has a lot more sliders that I can adjust, and you're gonna see some wrinkles showed up. So whenever this forehead, the eyebrows up goes up, uh, I get wrinkles. If I go in here and click this brow down, I get wrinkles in here. If I click on the side of the cheeks here, I get wrinkles dialed in. Where all of this is happening is if I scroll down in this section, you're gonna see I have wrinkle sets. And you also notice the green areas are one set, the blue areas are another set, the orange areas are another set. If you want, you can go, and I'll have these linked somewhere, um, you can go into the face tools documentation. It'll explain what expressions in ZBrush are controlling what expression sliders, how the wrinkle sets are deconstructed into the blend shapes, and how, you know, when these shapes move, that part of the texture reses in. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a second. But going back here to the eyebrow raise, again, these wrinkles are coming in. This is a lot more human looking, looks a lot better. And you'll see, we can blend this in and out. So here's our overall influence for all of our expression wrinkles. Or for this particular expression, activated expression wrinkle here, we can change the strength. We can change the AO. So here's, you know, more or less AO being piped in. Here's more or less redness. So blood pooling, you know, when you have a wrinkle that goes up, you can have more redness. Uh, normal strength. This is a normal map. So you can dial in and out the normal strength of it. Even rate of appearance, how fast the wrinkles come in when this eyebrow shape activates, how fast the wrinkles appear. Now for this character or any character we make, there's default expressions wrinkles that we can pull in, which we've already showed you, neutral expressions. If you go to the Real Illusion Marketplace, there's a Wrinkle Essentials pack. In here, you'll see there's realistic and stylized. You can absolutely do stylized wrinkles. In fact, one of my previous live streams, we did a hyper-realistic vampire creature, which is what we're going to do in this series, as well as a stylized character, which we may or may not get to in the series, but it's the exact same process for doing a realistic or a stylized character. You just choose a little bit more of a stylistic approach for your wrinkles. Instead of having realistic wrinkles, you have groove or chisel or ripple wrinkles. And you can even do that into the Spider-Verse kind of ink line expressions that you can paint in because, again, along with normal information like these chisel and groove and ripple, or in the case of a realistic character, uh, we got shallow, very deep, bulky, deep, saggy. Along with that normal map information, you also have polypaint information. So on a stylized character, you can go in and instead of like painting in nice red AO or blood pooling, you can put in an ink line and that ink line will also blend in along with your normal map with a stylized expression wrinkle. Uh, now, if we go back to our expression wrinkles root folder, again, we have four that we can apply. You'll notice there is a little bit something different between, for example, Kevin and neutral. And that is this, and I'll zoom in here, this little double layer stack versus that single layer stack. If we right click this neutral and say content info, you're gonna see this is a wrinkle type of general live. If I close out of that and I go into Kevin and I right click and say content info, you'll see his wrinkle type is individual flattened. So what's the difference? If I scroll down, you're gonna see these aren't populated. They're not baked down. And if you look at the very bottom here, you have generalize and individualize. Right now, these are already generalized. I can put this these wrinkles on any character and I can go through here. It's basically just a normal map with a little bit of other parameter options in here that I can change. However, if I double click Kevin, that will assign Kevin's wrinkle maps 
to our character. And when I, you know, if you're if you're up here, scroll all the way down, you'll see now we have a diffuse map, a normal map, a roughness map that is specific to Kevin's character. Those are called individualized wrinkle maps. So now there's two problems with this. Number one, you're going to see that Kevin's skin tone is a little different than ours, but it is really, really good looking wrinkle. So we want to take advantage of that in a, in a bit in the next video. You'll also notice with an individualized wrinkle expression, uh, we can change the overall influence and we can change the strength and we can change the rate of appearance, but we can't change the AO redness or normal strength. Again, this is all baked in information, so we don't have access to that. However, if we want, character creator is smart enough to go, okay, wrinkle set number one, that is the eyebrow up in that green area. We can click on this diffuse, we can say generalize, say okay, and now we'll convert this individualized wrinkle set into a generic one. You'll see the fidelity isn't quite as high, but if you wanted to take an individualized uh, wrinkle expression data and apply it to any character, that's one way you could do it. And now you see it just did that for wrinkle set one. So if I scroll back up with uh, eyebrow up, still activated, now we can change not just the strength, but we can change the AO. We can change the redness. Normal strength has been grayed out because that hasn't been individualized yet, but at least on the diffuse properties, we can go through here. However, if I go through here and do brow down, you're going to see this one is still individualized. If I scroll down, that's pulling from wrinkle set two here, the blue area, and you can see blue, green, and red all correspond to these three wrinkle sets. Speaking of wrinkle sets, if you want to, you can go into the face tools online manual. That will show you how wrinkle sets uh, correspond to the ZBrush blend shapes we're going to be playing with and how those get piped into the character and and in fact the relationship between regions and wrinkle sets so these are the regions we're playing with the green regions correspond to you know forehead lines eye blink etc so you can scroll through this documentation and that'll explain that a little bit better now if you want to start over you can go up here and you can click on this remove wrinkles button before you do that, you may notice right to the left of this is an update wrinkle texture color. So you may be thinking, well, okay, so I want, I've got some wrinkles in here. Can I just update the color? In this instance, it doesn't really update Kevin's colors to match your skin tone, unfortunately. But I'll show you how it works because like you're here to learn stuff, right? So I'm going to go through here. I'm going to say remove wrinkles. So this removes all the activated wrinkle sets. I'm going to reapply neutral just by double clicking this. Or again, you can just check box on activate expression wrinkles, does the same thing. And now we have, again, our generic expression wrinkles applied. If I go to our material here and choose standard skin head for our base body mesh, and I right click the base color, this is different than having, you know, going down here, because again, you can go in here to skin color, activate skin color, go in here to color adjust, activate, you know, change this to a completely different skin tone if you want to. However, if we're talking about updating wrinkle maps, if I right click the base color and go in here to adjust color, I can slide this hue all the way over to the left and turn this character blue, but you're going to see that expression wrinkle still has a redness to it. If I go back to expression wrinkle, you'll see this is now active. We can update the wrinkle texture color to make it so that it inherits that blue hue shift that we did. There we go. So now when we do our AO and our that that AO strength doesn't kind of default to a redness, it defaults to a blueness now. So again, it's not going to fix the Kevin thing, but uh, that's how that button works. So I'm going to go back here to my material, right click base color, go back into adjust color and we'll um, just double click hue. That'll send it back to zero. Again, that wrinkle is now blue. So make sure you go back into expression wrinkle and say, uh, update the wrinkle texture color button. Now, I do want to interject here that if you do have a character that has the baked in skin tones here, if I go ahead and pause this animation, you'll see we have the skin color activated with that material selected. So again, that CC base body skin head. If you scroll down, we can change the skin color. And even though these are all individualized, if you go back to that wrinkle set, or these are all individual baked in wrinkles. If you are using this, you know, changing the skin color, those wrinkles will work just fine. You'll see as they cycle through the expression wrinkles, those are fine for both Kevin and if you're doing your own custom character. So here's a character we're going to be making in the series. These are all, again, individualized textures. We can go back to the material. We can change this entire skin tone uh, using the skin color parameters. And then again, when we go through 
in play, you'll see these expression wrinkles, again, are just fine. You don't have to go through and rebake to a different color if you're just using the skin color parameter updates. Now, if you do have the wrinkle pack, you can, and this is a realistic character, we haven't done stylized yet, you can go in here to realistic and say, okay, let's change this to deep saggy. Just double click that, and now you'll see the brow down's got a few more wrinkles, a little more saggy. If I do the uh, brow up, we got a lot more wrinkle pattern in here. So again, you can use these packs or you can use face tools to dial in your own shapes, which is what we're going to get into in the next video. Now, just to play around with it just a little bit, I'm going to go in here to the character tab, go down here to the stylized folder. We'll load in Eddie here. The current project will be discarded. Go ahead and say, no, we don't want to save. We'll say replace all. Hit OK. Now, he still has his, eye, his brow up activated, and I can go through here, and I can activate his expression wrinkles. And his hair is kind of hiding it, so I'm going to go in here to Scene, and I'm going to turn off hair, hair Front and Hair Base. And then I'm going to choose the Eddie character, and then go back to our Activate Expression Wrinkles. So now, when I do the uh, sneer or the brow down or the brow up, you're going to see these are kind of realistic wrinkles. Um, that's just when I went activate expression wrinkles. Again, what it's doing is dialing in those expression wrinkles neutral set. However, I do have a stylized pack that I can pull from. So instead of doing realistic wrinkles, we can do a bevel. And so now we just have a simple bevel. And if I do the brow down, again, we just have very clean, simple uh, bevels. Or we can switch this over to a chisel. You know, that's got a different chiseled look. And again, this is still the exact same topology. If I go back to scene, open up Eddie, go into body here and switch this to wireframe, it's the exact same topology. So just like I said in that previous live stream, you can do hyper-realistic characters, you can do a stylized character, same topology. And in face tools, you can go in and you can make realistic wrinkles or you can make super stylized wrinkles. It's completely up to you how you want to do that. But the same three things that we're juggling still apply to stylized characters and realistic characters. You've got your base shape. In this case, the base shape is a stylized head. And if we go in here to our motion tab and say edit facial, and I'm just going to switch to expressions here so I can just kind of dial in different happy expressions. Or I can go from happy to angry. So here's a bunch of different angry expressions. And you're going to see as the face moves, different expression wrinkles get piped in. Just like a realistic character, a stylized character is going to have their own set of expression wrinkles. So if I reset this to zero, close out of that, choose our top character node, go back to expression wrinkles and scroll down the exact same system and in fact it even also has well let's go ahead and do a brow up again or brow down it also has a uh, strength that you can dial in it has ao that you can change it has redness normal strength etc so like i said in the next video we're going to start with kevin we're going to make him into our own creature character that we want to make and then we're finally going to dive from character creator into zbrush and talk about face tools